The conclusion we've come to from that is that there's a significant spherical aberration that appears to be present in the optics. And that we should be able to fix it in our insurance program. We were very worried about how the mission would be perceived if we were not able to accomplish all of the objectives of the mission. And we have a go for main engine start. Bye. Just disappointment. Like everybody else, we were all looking forward to the images from the telescope. And we have liftoff. Liftoff of the Space Shuttle Endeavour on an ambitious mission to service the Hubble Space Telescope. I wasn't uh, an official part of the mission control team for the deploy, but I got to go down and sit next to Story Musgrave while he was Capcomming as they were working an issue during deploy just in case he needed an extra set of hands to bring him coffee or something. We were all waiting for the images to come back because we all are curious about our universe and we were disappointed when they were not perfect. Now, uh, you, some people ask me earlier today, what is spherical aberration? The simplest way of understanding it is that when you have a uh, mirror that's focusing, the light all comes together at a single point is the objective of the exercise. You want the light to come together and focus at a single point. When you have spherical aberration, it says that there's some disfigurement of that mirror that causes the light, instead of focusing at a single point, to be spread across a region in space. And that is spherical aberration. When I found out I was on the mission, it was really a surprise and really exciting. And, and mainly because it was gonna be so different than the mission I had right before it. And I was gonna to get to learn a lot of new things and, and fly with some, some good folks. So I was excited. The number one goal on the first Hubble Space Telescope servicing mission was to correct the error in the mirror. There was a lot of training uh, and there were a lot of review teams. Those are the two things that I remember. The training was really really enjoyable and we, we would train for the ascent and entry parts of the mission for the orbit part of the mission and simulators um, and then there were a lot of water tank runs where we would go over there with the, the folks who were doing the spacewalks um, they would be the ones in the water and the, the rest of us would be outside watching um, running the robot arm in the water tank um, but sometimes we get to put on scuba gear and get down up close and watch what they were working with and that was really fun too my key task was to be the basically the co-pilot. We call it the pilot because you know you don't want to be the co-pilot on a on a space shuttle. You, uh, the, you've got the commander and the pilot uh, during the launch rendezvous, the grapple and the berthing of the telescope, and then the release and flyaway, uh, and then the the entry. The way we felt the, the public pressure was in all the review teams. We had lots of folks looking over our shoulder, trying to make sure that we were thinking of everything that we needed to think about before we did the mission. But for the crew, I think our biggest worry was, was less about being successful and being able to correct the problem, the vision problem with the telescope. And it was more about making sure we didn't make the situation worse. The crew on the first servicing mission was completely engaged and devoted to making that mission a success. Everybody had a job. We tried not to do other people's jobs, but we were always there to help. If somebody needed help, somebody stepped in. If somebody had something they needed, somebody else would figure out how to, how to help them with it. And there's a lot of feelings you get up in space, a lot of really good feelings when you see the Earth, when you see a, a beautiful instrument like the telescope. But uh, I think every astronaut's greatest fear is making a mistake. And probably the best thing you can possibly hear is when the ground comes up and says, hey, you did that right. Uh, you, you went through post insertion and uh, there weren't any mistakes. Or, yeah, that didn't work out like we expected it to, but uh, we really think you did the right thing. So thanks. When the corrected images came out, that's when I was able to breathe a sigh of relief and say, uh, it really worked. And I think a lot of the other folks on the team were that way too. It was like, okay, this really did work. Folks will pay a lot of attention to what we did, but if you look at the engineering challenge, the, all the intricate details of the instruments that were required to gather the data that was presented, it's really impressive. The, the work that was done is was a hundred times harder than our servicing mission. Um, and so I think all of us were a little bit relieved when we saw those pictures. Every mission tries to take as much as it can from the missions that went before it. 
the Hubble servicing mission, the first Hubble servicing mission, tried to take as much as it could from other, we call them spacewalk missions or EVA missions of the past, whether they were for assembly or repairs. And then uh, a lot of it was developed new for the Hubble Space Telescope uh, repair mission. But then a lot of the knowledge that was developed there transferred directly to construction of the International Space Station. It'll transfer to things that we do at Gateway someday. Um, it'll apply to things that we do on the moon and, and, and deep space going to Mars and beyond. Um, it, it all links. But there are a lot of procedures and processes that were developed during Hubble missions or started during Hubble missions that have been refined. And, and you can see the roots when you, when you look at ops on the International Space Station today. I am proud of our team for what we did, but I'm proud of the country for, for being willing to invest in something like that, that's pure science, that's trying to learn about what's around us. And, and our international partners, they were also um, part of the mission, right? I mean, it's, it's something that's good about humanity, that we can put our efforts on something positive that increases our knowledge of, of our surroundings. I think perspective is good. I think we've seen that things are bigger than us. Um, and and you, you look at a Hubble image and you realize that the universe is bigger than us. And that perspective helps you realize that, you know, all humans are important. Everybody that you talk to is important and that, um, that none of us deserve to be treated differently than anyone else. So, sir, I just want to say I'm proud to be from a country that supports efforts like this. I think uh, space exploration reflects the continuing pioneering spirit uh, of the American people, and I think it's something we can all be proud of.